two open houses back to back in two locations. For many, many years, we had uh, one Sunday in Ochai, one Sunday in Opana. And uh, last year, because of COVID, we had the same Sunday, but both of them were outside. Both of them were outdoors. This is our first year doing it this way. We just finished a little bit of an open house, and we're uh, getting going here. Very excited to see you. My name is Rabbi Seth Brower. I am your Shiva here at Orchayim. And uh, it's super uh, nice to see you all here. And that you took time in your afternoon on a beautiful day, or well, became a beautiful day, to join us uh, here, to join us indoors, which is wonderful. So thank you. This is an exciting time for all of you, particularly the eighth graders sitting here. And uh, you should be excited and you should be proud. Graduation is coming, finishing up elementary school. Don't minimize the decision and don't minimize your choice. Because the decision you're about to make, the choice you're going to make for high school, is a choice that's going to set you on a path for many years to come. It's going to define in many ways who you are, who you become, and how you evolve and how you grow as an individual. We have many goals here for this morning, and I have a few goals associated with my opening remarks. But I want to start by introducing you to some of the members of all of our team who you will meet. And I encourage you to find ways to speak to them, ask them questions, and really do your best to gain an understanding as to who they are and what they mean to this institution. We show that we show him first and foremost, Mr. Hillel Rapp. He is our principal, Mr. Rapp oversees our entire educational program, our school, and is responsible for just about everything that goes on. Next up, you may have to close the door. Is that okay? Thank you so much. Next up is Mr. Jonathan Parker, our assistant principal of campus head, and is responsible for the day-to-day -day operations of our wonderful school. Mr. Gerald Lazard, our dean of students, so Zara is not only responsible for today's entire program as director of admissions, but he oversees a robust system of guidance and so many of the programs, clubs, committees, and issues that go on. Rabbi Noah Sonnenberg heads up our Lamudi Kodesh program and has done an incredible job of increasing the amount of learning, Torah options that are offered or Chaim, maintains responsibility over all of the courses, the level of learning, and ultimately the inspiration of these classes at these Shemurim bring to our Talmudim, to our students. Most significantly, Mr. Parker, Mr. Lazar, and Rabbi Sonnenberg all teach our students directly, all have open doors in which our students feel comfortable hanging out in their offices and spending time learning with them. Next, Mrs. Miriam Klein, who's in charge of our entire program of academic support, which is truly beneficial to so many of our students. Every aspect of our school has been built to ensure that we provide our young men with a ton of educational, social, and emotional, and of course, religious guidance and support. We recognize that kids today need a ton of advice and hand-holding, and it's our responsibility to provide that. And towards that end, we have developed an exceptional team of rebellion who spend more time with each and every Talmud within our yeshiva than anyone else. Our rebellion begin the year by calling parents, introducing themselves, making it very clear to our parents that you can go to them with anything at all, any issues of concern, even if they're not necessarily religious, and they will do whatever they can to help our to meeting. Religious commitment among adolescents is not easy today. Our to meeting have lots of questions, and naturally so. And they are challenged by an anti-religious world and environment that promotes Many values that unfortunately are antithetical to religious belief and practice. And our rebellion go above and beyond in their teachings to help our Talmud to develop positive self-confidence and self-worth to strengthen their lifelong commitment to halacha. And finally, we have an incredibly talented group of shlichim who of course serve as rebellion and teachers within our yeshiva, and they bring with them a love of the Znat Yisrael and a passion towards religious Zionism that adds so much to our yeshiva. This morning is a packed program, or this afternoon rather, I should say, a packed program. But allow me to share a brief Dvar Torah, a thought that I think very much relates to what makes us at our high and unique and gives you a picture and a window into where we are hashkafically. Within orthodoxy, within Frumkite, I think we all know that there are very different ways 
the Jews often decide to divide, to divide and to live their religious lives. There are those who isolate themselves and they try to live in a world in which they cut themselves off from the world around them. And there are those who try to mesh and merge and blend their religious lives within the larger cultural environment that we live in. And in fact, for one to maintain a halakhic lifestyle, it may even be argued that it's easier to cut oneself off from the world around us. And we believe that a Kodesh Baruch Hu wants us to enjoy this world, and God wants us to be a part of this world, and to elevate the world around us through a commitment to Torah and mitzvah. This past Shabbat, we were introduced to Noah. Noah, of course, is called a tzaddik. But it's Bidorotam, it's within his generation. And according to at least some of the Mishonim, to demonstrate that Noah was able to stand against the tide and to go at it alone. Over the next few weeks, we will see how Abraham made it his life mission to promote monotheism within an idolatrous society. And in fact, when Abraham asked God to save the city of stone on account of the tzaddikim, the righteous people, Abraham asked, Hamishim tzaddikim betochayir. I once heard something that I thought was incredible. Maybe Abba was saying that it's no finish, no great novelty to have 50 righteous men that are outside the city. But the novelty is that it's impossible to have 50, 50 righteous people who can live within the city, who can do business, who can be engaged in the world, within it, and still remain more righteous. And that, to me, is a little bit of a wow to think about. And I think that to some extent it makes what we do at our Chaim very unique. Because we teach our Talmud and have to be steeped in Torah, fully committed 100% to halakha, but within the world around us. We say that we are so much more than a school, but it isn't just a tagline. And I want to spend a minute explaining to you why. We believe this to be true. We are always innovating and coming up with new ideas and new programs. Just prior to Sukkot, I gave it to our Torah and I asked our students the following question. I said, why was it that a Kodesh Baruch Hu created a Chag, created a holiday based on the Anime Hakal, the half clouds of glory? In effect, God should have said that I'm going to create a Chag based on all the ways in which I helped you in the Midbar. God took the Jewish people out of the Torah and he gave them money, and he gave them money, he gave them bread, he gave them water. He also gave them clouds. He also protected them. He also built them huts. But we decide to only celebrate based on the Anamei HaKavod, based on these clouds. And we don't celebrate based on the mud, and based on the bread, and the, the water, rather. Why is that? So I suggested, because in order to create a Chag, you have to do something exceptional. If you're just giving them what they need, basic elements, basic responsibilities, well, that's not enough to create a Chag based on that. And in many ways, the example that I used at the time, and I realized that I have to use it for open house, was I said, when it comes to open house, we don't get up and say, guess what, guys? We're an amazing school. We're an amazing yeshiva. You know why? Because we have teachers, and we have students. And guess what? We also have classes. We don't say that. Why? Because you can't be a yeshiva. You can't be a school without that. But rather, we highlight what is it that makes us so much more than a school, so much more than a yeshiva. And rather than hear from me, I decided to survey and send a brief questionnaire to students to ask them how to describe to you what does it mean that we are so much more than a school. And I'd like to share a few of their answers. I apologize to all the students, many of them answered, and I'm not going to share them, but a few answers that we started with. Josh Harris. There we go. Let's make sure we're on the right slide. Our client is so much more than a school as they go beyond the expectations of the school. Events like Mishmar, Shabbatonin, and other programs that student council organized really enhance the experience of the school and they bring everyone closer to each other. Jordan Jessen. The goal of most high schools is to teach their students the curriculum and nothing more. The goal of our Chaim is not only to teach their students, but to enhance their lives as well. Tisha, Shabbatonin, very dedicated to checking in on students' well-being. Teachers staying long outside school hours to get extra help to students. Special learning programs that I still remember to this day. Interesting courses. It's these privileges that allow me to walk the beautiful halls every day and talk about how proud I am to be here. 
That is what makes why a city yeshivat or chayim so much more than a school. City finta. It's so much more than a school because it's a community. Not just the things that happen inside of school, but the things that happen outside of school that make us feel that we're accepted and wanted within this great brotherhood. Hill Bremer, as cliche as it sounds, in my three years at Archive, it has developed from what originally was just a school to now my second family. The bonds created with teachers, friends, and other students are things that I will value for a lifetime. I'm so incredibly proud to be part of the Archaim family. And one from a teacher to conclude, Mr. Tanya Mies, our school social worker, that I thought it was really beautiful. We put a lot of effort successfully in forming bonds between our staff and our students that allow us to see past the academic to the students themselves on a personal level. We don't just educate students, we educate families. In the partnerships we forge with our parents, to keep them as part of the educational process. We become part of those families while our students are with us. See, every high school believes in academic excellence, speaks about it, but I think what's unique about our Chaim is that we do our best to maintain our exceptionally high standards in an environment of healthy, eager, motivated learners, and we try to ensure that it's coupled with less stress. And I feel totally confident telling you, our future grade nine students and parents, that we will do everything we can to ensure that you are happy. Before I close, I want to introduce you to my son, Yosef, who's sitting in the back, but who's currently a great patient, the inspiration, the religious growth, the guidance, the teachers that he had in this yeshiva, and I'm confident for his next step in life because of everything that our Chaim has given to him. One theme that you will hear this morning is that we are never satisfied with the status quo and that we are always trying to get better and better each and every year. Today, adolescence is not easy. There are lots of challenges in the world around us and it's harder than ever to be a teenager. Your choice of high school is an incredibly important decision and it will set you on a journey that will impact you through the most impressionable and vital years of your life. We suggest that you consider taking that voyage and that journey in what we believe is a loving, caring, and special environment here that we have at Orkhani. It will be a decision that will set you, we hope, on the most exceptional path that you are yet to travel. Thank you for listening. your attention to this year's video.